Today's a good day. You know why? Because I am heading to a special place in Garden Grove, which is about an hour away from me, to pick up some new wheels for my E46 project. There she is. This beauty in the flesh. I'm actually really excited. I'm getting rid of all the wheels on all of my cars. So my 350Z race car, my S13 demo car, which you guys haven't seen in like five, six years. You'll see it soon. Why don't you lying? Why? Why you always lying? And then my E46, and they're all gonna be on the same wheels. They're all gonna have the same look. I'm really excited to kind of do this aesthetic overhaul on all of my cars. Even though they're all very different, they're gonna have this piece kind of tying it together uh, in its look and its feel and I can't wait to show you guys. That's not gonna be today's episode. Today, we're actually heading to Kanzai Wheels and Super excited to be working with them, my program, with my cars, but I'm excited to take a tour of the facility, understand a little bit more about the wheels, their design, their manufacturing process, get to meet Chris in person. I'm really excited. So let's head down to Kanzai. We'll take a look around. We'll show you guys the wheels and we'll go from there. Yeah. All right, so we're here in the Kanzai headquarters. I'm gonna walk down the hallway and meet Chris for the very first time and I think this is his office, so there he is, the man hello. himself. Hello, hello. Nice to meet you, Good to meet you. Yes, welcome to Kansai Wheels, and welcome to my little cave here. Oh, I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Kansai so is actually a Japanese word, and it means thoughtfully and designed with emotion. It's actually oh. an engineering practice, so kind of stick true to that here with everything we do, and Kansai was a very, very unique name we came across as a Drifting entry maneuver. ドリフト。<笑><笑> but also a Japanese like sort of engineering practice. It really resonated with me personally because uh, I'm an engineer by trade. Oh. So anything that comes up that's engineering related, I'm like, this is really cool. The Kansai has been around since for three years. We're still pretty fresh, but we're proud of that. You know, not every brand can have a 30 year old history. Right. You know, I mean, we'll get there eventually for sure. But you know, Anki and Work and all those other great brands that we definitely admire and look up to. Mm -hmm. uh, we just, just want to fit in and be, you know, we want to build a house in that neighborhood that just complements what they have going on. So, that, that, yeah, that's us. Yeah. Me? Uh, I am a wheel designer slash engineer by trade. I've uh, been designing wheels probably about 10, 11 years now. Started off as like a freelance wheel designer and then kind of Found my way through a few different companies. I'm from the East Coast, so now I'm out here on the West Coast. Welcome to the Best Coast. I found, a, found my way here to Raceline, which is Kansai's mm -hmm. parent company. And I've been working here for six years. I've been working here. And yeah, I, uh, solid amount of time. Yeah, so I've been designing and engineering a lot of wheels for uh, a lot of the products while underneath Raceline, the parent company's portfolio. So I've done, you know, truck wheels, off-road truck racing wheels, UTV, ATV wheels, trailer wheels. Just as I've been developing and designing stuff, I really have a, my background is in tuner car culture and JDM mm -hmm. stuff. So uh, I wanted a way to kind of start a, a new brand based on everything I learned as a professional wheel designer and engineer, and then also merge it with my passion for a scene that I really care about. And this is a great place that has the resources to be able to do so. Yes, I do. Yeah, I, I've been messing with cars ever since my first Integra EC4 oh, okay. LS Turbo. Oh. I, I, did, I had an S2000 for a little bit, but then my longest running car that I had that I really fell in love with and even sort of tried drifting with was my IS300. Oh. And I don't have one anymore, very, very sadly. Oh. I, I sold it. It was a stick, but I had it for, for eight years. It was my longest running car. Oh. I tried out the truck thing for a while. Mm -hmm. I got a Tacoma and dumped way too much money into it. Mm -hmm. Sold that, and now I have a uh, just a 4Runner as my daily. Oh. That's not all. You also have my little fun car project that I'm working on. 
I have a 97 Viper GTS. Oh, um, a lot like this one here. Motivated. Adorable. Yeah. yeah, this is at home, and these are the wheels for it right here that I'm slowly working on oh. behind the scenes. Okay. Very, very slowly, but um. Yeah, I, I love anyone that just does stuff with style. Anyone that's out there on the weekends and using our stuff, that would be my, my favorite drifter. The history is a little bit what I want to touch on earlier is, you know, just working here for, for so long and then designing wheels for every other, you know, different type of market. And then just wanting to utilize everything I learned from even the most boring stuff about wheel design that people don't even consider, like safety bead bumps. It's in a very thick technical manual that I don't think a lot of people really reference, but everything from those aspects all the way to the cosmetic design, which is my favorite part because it's like, designing stuff that can change the look of the car, which is my favorite part of developing anything, is uh, the ability to change the look of something. Tying all those elements together really is what sparked like starting something that I saw also as a gap in the marketplace. Because there's a lot of wheel brands out there, it's no secret, you know, a lot of them that we love that have been around for so, so long, the Rays, the, you know, the Volk stuff, a lot of the old OG Japanese stuff, a lot of the high-end American stuff that's been out there, as well as like a lot of lower end brands as well. And I thought right in the middle, there needed to be a good quality brand that wasn't trying to, you know, break the bank for people, but also spoke to the quality of a well-designed and well-engineered wheel, but it also was able to function out either in drifting or a little, you know, track driving, and of course, our street driving. I, I am, yes, I, I definitely You am. are? Yeah, I am. I, I, we, I, say, I say we because I like to share the load here because there's a lot of infrastructure here in place that helps keep the brand moving. Part of being in this awesome location is having the facilities all around us, whether it's shipping and logistics and customer service, sales, um, internet marketing. Everyone's kind of here and everyone's helping the, the greater cause. So uh, that's why I keep saying we, but yeah, I, I definitely, you know, it was a project of mine and definitely uh, is still my baby. So I, I definitely am very instrumentally involved with all aspects of the branding's image and the voice of the brand and also the community management behind, you know, this big social side of things. We like to be a brand that people can relate to and, you know, say, hey, I want to be on Kansai because I, I like what those guys are about over there. This is home, this is HQ right here. This is where, you know, Samples come in and out. This is where we prototype stuff. This is where we, you know, work on spreadsheets and boring stuff, and we sell and we will call things. But yeah, our Southern California office is, is where all the all the fun stuff happens. We're working on new T-shirts and all these other fun little projects. But we also have a warehouse in Dallas, and we also have a warehouse in uh, Seattle now. So we're slowly, you know, getting a little bit wheels across the country to help, you know, fulfill a lot of our e-commerce orders. Well, you know, there's a lot that goes into more than just the face of the wheel as well, but of course the face of the wheel being the most recognizable part of any uh, wheel development. And uh, I think the wheel you're, you're most likely might be referring to is the R R34 looking tandem mm -hmm. wheel, which mm -hmm. we had a lot of fun with. But now that's a factory wheel. It's been around for, uh, you know, since the early 90s, so it's, you know, we definitely love that wheel a lot. I think a lot of car enthusiasts also really love the Skyline platform and have a lot of respect for its you know, godlike status in the tuner car world. So yeah, the tandem wheel is a true inspirational nod to the R34 GTR six spoke wheel. Now we made some tweaks to it, but I fully, fully accept the fact that yes, that is a true nod to that, to that car. And why not take that wheel that was so cool and redo it with modern construction modern flow forming construction, of more brake clearance, more offsets, more colors, more bolt patterns, brand new wheel ready to go. You don't have to hunt down those wheels that are out there that are original Nissan wheels. They are um, weak specs, you know, when it comes to today's modern market. So why not make it in better fitments and just bring, bring that wheel back for sure. Um, we had a lot of fun doing it. Um, even the grenade wheels, you can't really even find anymore. Uh, nothing against any fans of that wheel. By all means, if you can find them, go grab them. They're your thing. We're not going to stop you. We love those wheels too. We love all wheels. So whatever whatever someone wants to do, uh, if someone really identifies with our brand and our purpose and our message, come get our tandem wheels because we're making them fresh for you. And if you're into old school stuff, if you're into older Japanese wheels, that's awesome. You know, totally. I've had them too. I've had all the Advans and, and you know, I've had CE28s 
really admire that stuff as well. I'm just trying to bring a little bit of that flavor into brand new made wheels that we can all love and easily get. The KNP wheel, which is our five spoke wheel. And I mean, when you hear five spoke, you're like, great, how many times has that been done? Like, of course that could look like anything, but my buddy Steven, um, this is his S14. And this is a, a very, very long time ago. This is my first set of wheels I ever designed and produced. Uh, just a five spoke wheel. This is a commission job I did before I was, you know, even out of college. I did this very, very small fun project. And he came, my buddy came to me, all he wanted was a five spoke wheel that was concave, had some rounded edges, something a mix between an OZ Futura and a, an older Volk wheel that he really liked. And um, I keep this picture with me because it always reminds me of like, uh, you know, where the brand kind of came where from. Where you started. Yeah, so um, this is actually a picture I took for USDM Freaks magazine, a Japanese magazine back in the day. A lot of the Virginia guys, if you're watching, you'll, you'll recognize this car. It's definitely a local famous car, LS swapped S14. Steven did a lot of work to this thing, but the wheels were always my favorite part. Now we just had, I just drew up the centers myself based on his ideas, bought the lips and barrels straight up full retail price from CCW, and we just put them together in a garage. This was nine years ago today. So the KMP are literally like a, a small nod to the Steven's initials. And uh, this is the five spoke wheel, concave step lip. It's very, very simple wheel. This is our KMP, this is what still lives on today. An idea I had nine years ago that I've been kind of keeping in my back pocket for the for perfect cause. And this car actually wound up on a shirt of ours, our first t-shirt design too. So this is the KMP, fully comes from this, this old project I did a very, very long time ago, but very near and dear to my heart. And uh, shout out to uh, Sumo Speed and, and Steven and uh, anyone from the Virginia Beach scene that really helped me you know, get this going. And I asked uh, Steven before we even started Kanse, I'm like, hey, remember that wheel design I did for you? Like nine years ago, I, I really want to like bring that back, but in a one piece construction. To this day, any KMP you see, I will fight to have it have the, even the smallest amount of concavity on the face because it has to it has to hit back to this original concept of a concave five spoke with a step lip. So even our highest offset KMPs will have this um, mm. this very, very similar look. Just, just still to this day trying to like uh, at least link back to this. So yeah, the KMP definitely um, uh, one of my favorites for this reason. It's, it's important to remember that China has made its way as a manufacturing juggernaut in the world economy for a lot of reasons. I mean, your iPhones from China, a lot of the components in your car in China, a lot of the cast OE wheels you might see on Toyotas and um, Fords and a lot of OE like Regular cars that are out in the parking lots right now, are, all those cast wheels could have been made in China as well. Now, that being said, China has had a rough reputation in the core enthusiast market just because of some of the lower end brands that might have had a rough go of it and maybe they uh, tarnished a greater thing. But it's important to remember that when you have good relationships with your manufacturing and partners in China, um, you, there's a lot that can be said about improving a product and holding all parties accountable for the engineering and the strength testing that goes into it. You can't just order a random wheel off of Alibaba and it shows up. Like that's not what we do here. We have, thanks to our parent company, we have you know 20 plus year relationships with individual factories overseas that we talk to every day. We don't just send them a random photo and say, hey, make this. We get back very detailed blueprints. Everything is tested on international standards, whether it be JWL, uh, VIA, everything is documented. Um, large insurance agreements are made on both sides. These are going on you know, customers, vehicles, and there has to be a certain amount of accountability when it comes to product testing and longevity. There's a lot of things that I think a lot of people don't realize that go into the creation of wheels overseas this might not be marketed the best. I know it's usually viewed in a dim light, but um, there's a lot of strength in manufacturing over there when it comes to volume. And you know, a, a part of manufacturing overseas is passing along those savings to the end consumer. So sure, you could buy like a much more, you know, developed wheel that comes out of uh, Japan or the, or the US, but because of, you know, a multitude of different factors that can really inform the end price. So. To stay competitive, I think a lot of brands 
a lot of the bigger brands, even you know, a lot of the enthusiasts are familiar with, are all made overseas, whether it be China, Taiwan, uh, Vietnam. There's a lot of really strong manufacturers over there that are also producing OE wheels. But I sort of touched on earlier is international standards that are really no joke. You, you can't skirt around a lot of these. So the more that we can study and become familiar with what's possible and what's not and what's regulated and even exceed some recommended specs like load ratings are very closely monitored and uh, wheels are x-ray tested, they are salt spray tested. All this documentation we uh, request from our factories, we pour over, we analyze, we see how we can improve, we look at the inner lip structures on things, we work on these blueprints sometimes 10 times before anything is finalized. So we are in close relationship with the engineers on both sides of the water. We really enjoy that process and we really, you know, honor their strengths and what they bring to the table as well as our feedback for what our customers are looking for, what unique applications our wheels might be used for. Drifting, for example, we reinforce the inner lips because sometimes people dirt drop and then that might not be something the factory would be familiar with on a street wheel, but it's something we can point out to them, have the ability to make that change, effectively communicate it, and roll it into full-on production. So there are a lot of strengths. Reputation or the thought a lot of people have with overseas manufacturing might be a certain way, and I'll, surely I won't convince everyone otherwise, but I know that I can at least speak to the efforts that we go to on scales large and small. All of the people in this building to make sure we get a quality wheel over here that we can stand behind, and if anything comes, you can always call us. You know, we're here, we stand behind our products 100%. It's no secret that a lot of wheels from a lot of manufacturers are made overseas, but it's for a specific reason, and as long as everyone puts their best foot forward and, you know, producing a really quality piece, it's, we don't have any problem standing behind it for the life of the product or the life of your vehicles. And I hope that speaks a little bit to the dim light that's cast on manufacturing overseas. Here's, here's one of the books that we reference is the technical manual that goes, that speaks to all wheel design. Uh, these are standards that are no joke. This, this is stuff we, we stick to and we communicate with overseas. I think as long as people can understand the efforts that we're going through to uh, manufacture wheels competitively, a lot of other brands, we're not, we're not the only one and we're not going to be the last company that comes around that manufactures overseas. But if anything I can do, I can say that we are putting as much effort, if not above average effort, into producing a really fantastic wheel. We're here, our phones are here, our, our emails are here, we're here to help you out. If anything happens, I mean, people hit stuff with their wheels all the time, we get it. Sometimes people never call us back, it's great, but uh, it, it goes back to what I was saying about putting that best foot forward into like servicing the product and also like fleshing out the personality of the brand. It's how a US brand can excel, even it doesn't matter where they're producing their stuff, as long as it's thoroughly developed. Uh, not not ever off the bat. I, I think um, when Kanse initially came out, I, I really had a lot of pride in like a very narrow focus, which I think is a, a strength of the brand. Like we're, we weren't trying to be everything to everybody, especially when establishing a new brand, you want to be known for a core market. And the core market we chose to hit um, with the least amount of brand noise was definitely um, drift. So yeah, we build our wheels a little bit you know, more reinforced for drift, 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 and we love it. But uh, we have recently ventured out into a couple of truck wheels, which is very exciting. We noticed a lot of guys had a Forerunner, a Tacoma, or a Titan on the side. So that was a cool new development. So as time goes on, you will see cool new stuff come out from Kanse. Get a lot of feedback from guys that are using our wheels to already time attack or already autocross, which is really cool and on any given weekend. So we're getting a lot of feedback from that. So you might see something from us pretty soon looking into, you know, doing some lighter weight stuff because a lightweight wheel isn't always the best for drifting. The two and two don't really go hand in hand, but we could look at a way of maybe developing a new subline or definitely a new product addition. When I was over in Japan, a lot of, you know, we did some product testing on our wheel. You know, even like the higher PSIs, some of those guys run 100 pounds of air, 120 pounds of air. So being able to hold up to that um, is definitely a different world and, you know, just different radial and lateral impacts a, a drift wheel can handle that. You know, like a lot of time attack wheels are built so lightly and so thinly because on time attack you're the only person out there. Right. That's why you can have crazy wings on your car, that's why you can have crazy splitters because you're not going to touch anyone else. As long as someone's on track trying to shave off seconds off their time, 
totally different scene than us. So um, yeah, that's why, you know, if you try to use a super lightweight wheel, it might not have the best consequences when throwing it into a drift environment. You mind uh, if we kind of take a look around and then sure, and yeah. then I can also pick up my wheels Absolutely, too? Absolutely, yeah, you All right, let's, let's, do it. let's do that. Right, so what wall are we standing in front of? This is our famous wall of wheels right here in our, our showroom. A lot of the questions we get sometimes is like, can I come in and check out the showroom? Can I come see you guys? I mean, this is it. You know, we're happy to take visitors by appointment only, but you know, being a new brand, of course, I understand everyone wants it touch and feel the stuff, but um, yeah, this is what we got right here. We got a little bit on display, a little bit of everything, and um, this gives you a good chance to see our two-piece forge wheels, which is a smaller product offering from us, but a, a very special one that we could produce in-house here. Build stuff for custom applications, wide body stuff, mm -hmm. we did it. We do have the ability, another cool strength of ours is to build and prototype wheels right here in-house, uh, right behind those doors about 30 feet from my desk. That helps us learn a lot about what a wheel can and cannot do as well. This is our tandem here, everyone, everyone loves this one, the, the total R34 mm -hmm. uh, OE wheel. They're much more concave though. This is a five by 100, so never was available. Right. Past. Our world famous KMP, some of our cool color gel caps. We offer, I think, six colors now. This is one of our truck wheels right here. We had a lot of fun um, taking our Roku design and turning it into a uh, Tacoma fitment because it's just a really mm -hmm. clean six spoke. Mm -hmm. Cool story about the Roku wheel. This is the one piece version here, but we, before SEMA one year, we actually prototyped it in two piece forge uh, the week before the show. Showed it, got a bunch of interest on it, and then uh, we decided to bring it in in a one piece version uh -huh. here. So um, one of the cool ways to bring a wheel to life was, uh, you know, even in this very same colorway, we showed it at SEMA and forged and People just loved it so much and informed us to, hey, let's do a run of the One Piece version. So, cool little story on the on the Roku as well. All right, so back here, I think we've all seen a, a warehouse before, but you know, all of our brands are under one roof here, whether it's the Race Sign Truck Wheels or our Conse Wheels and a few other brands that we're trickling in. But if we go this way, we have tons of wheels uh, that we try to keep in stock. And see, this is a real warehouse. We're not. Working out of a storage unit, you know, we're not a couple of guys out of their mom's garage. This is a 100,000 square foot warehouse right in Southern California. And uh, we're able to service wheels out of here on forklifts with scanners and tracking that gets sent out automatically. And, you know, we work two shifts in a warehouse, so day and night. And when it comes to fulfillment, don't worry, your wheels are coming. They're fast, they're trackable, they're all with FedEx or UPS. We do international. You know, we are fully interested in getting your wheels out the door as soon as you order. Tons of space back here. I mean, this is like super impressive, so unsuspecting, but really cool that they're under the race line umbrella so they can really support uh, the demand of the new Kanse wheels. I mean, they've only been around for three years, but they can really go full bore and that's really cool to see. Right here is our fully functioning machine shop. For all the brands here, so not just Kansei, we're not cutting Kansei all day long, but um, we are doing a lot of cutting around the clock here on three uh, smaller mills, and this is our giant old Femco mill. It's been in here for 20 years, still cranks out every day. We can cut a 26 inch wheel in this machine. Not that there'll ever be a 20 inch, 26 inch Kansei wheel. Never <laughs> say never. Yeah, you never know. If someone hits us up with a donk, we, we can make it. Um, all, all this requires engineering and programming that I can do from my desk. So when we design a wheel, we can sign the tool paths and cut them out right here. The cool thing about forged wheels are that you can have a design literally that morning and you could have wheels on your car that night. You know, a, a crazier design could take a little long, but I'd say on average, a, a well efficiently programmed cutting path of a wheel, you could probably knock a center of a wheel out in about an hour. This is where uh, some of the early Kansei wheels were prototyped. I'll show you guys over here. The Roku I was talking about earlier, proto fully prototyped here. This is just a center, obviously. We would heat press it into a hoop. But um, yeah, the Roku wheel, this is the very early sample right here that we cut out. So, you know, you gotta see how it looks and see how it catches the light. So yeah, just a nice concave six spoke with some cool cutting around the window. We had three wheel designs we launched with and this was our first step outside the original three. So uh, we needed a, a, a six with a lip. So that's what you see here. So the, the original awesome. sample right here that we had the ability to make in house. Here's some KMPs right here. So what I just showed you guys over there was the uh, milling department. This over here is the lathing department. Now, whereas the tool of the cutting instrument spins over there on a mill, the 
wheel or the center forging in this machine spins and the tool stays stationary. So this is where we make the profile of the wheel. This is where the spokes get their convex or concave profiles all right here. It starts off with a big gray ugly blob. <laughs> this is all material we purchased from a place up in Oxnard, California. So US components 6061 T6. And this is what it looks like before we lathe it. And this is what it looks like after we lathe it. So what you guys see here is the raw heat treated forging. And people like to ask why are forged wheels so expensive? This already, this right here is already a hundred bucks. Raw. You could not, as an average person, you, you couldn't buy this and do anything with it. You have to put it in a hundred thousand dollar machine with two hundred dollar drill bits a person standing in front of it all day long, and then you have to turn it into this. It's important to know that as, you know, there's a lot of different levels to the wheel uh, market, that the amount of effort that goes into making forge wheels is priced appropriate for the amount of uh, hands and minds that it goes to to make those things come to life. It's not just marketing, it's not just a company that wants to get big off of selling forge wheels, they're actually much more labor intensive than a, a flow formed cast wheel in a box ready to go, uh, which we specialize in and sell. But every once in a while, you know, if you want to cut out something that's extremely custom for somebody, uh, this is the answer, but there is a price difference. But the more we can share about this process, and if you guys want to come back and fully walk a wheel through the whole forge process, we're happy to do that too, because it is really, really rewarding to see a wheel. That would be awesome. Yeah. Happy to do that too. You're pretty early, but it would be really cool to have you guys come back when the machines are yes. all buzzing and whirring. You could see literally do a time lapse video of a wheel coming to life and going through all the different steps. A premium forge wheel that is really happy to explain everything about the brand and meet you and then work more throughout the year on all the cool stuff that we can do here and all the cool stuff that you guys are doing. Chris was super awesome showing me the place and just meeting you for the very first time yeah, in yeah. person. <laughs> but thank you so much for uh, giving me the tour and giving me Absolutely. just a breakdown of what Kanze really is and where it came from and just partnering with me this year. So Absolutely, yeah. really excited. Just got done with the tour, about to head out. But first and most importantly, I have to pull around so I can pick up my brand new wheels for my E46. Here they are! Oh yeah! Woo! We'll uh, take a closer look at the wheels once I get home and once we're getting ready to mount them, but today it's all about the brand. All right, all loaded up boys and girls. All right guys, we're out of this joint. I'm not gonna show you guys the wheels today, but uh, I will show you guys in a future episode um, what we're gonna do, mounting it, putting it on the car, talk a little bit more about why I chose these wheels and all that, so stay tuned. <laughs> 